Welcome to the Sweepstakes College Baseball Podcast, where we talk everything college baseball from the past week. Uh, this is the final regular season weekend for most teams. Now week 14 has now ended. There are a few conferences that don't have conference tournaments where they do have a, a normal series coming up. But for the majority of conferences out there, this was the final regular season week. So a lot uh, up to discuss with a lot of uh, yeah conference regular season titles finishing and yeah there was a lot of interesting uh, exciting baseball games over the past week but starting with our player of the week we're going to give it to the man himself Peyton Toll week after his mother passed away unfortunately uh, he had a really good performance so it really shows his mental resilience there and super impressive even though maybe the stat line isn't uh, you know blowing up the page just to have a, a good start just getting out on the mound at all is impressive and to be able to, to have a start where he went seven innings got the win for the team even though they lost the series and uh, got 11 strikeouts. So still a very, very solid uh, performance. And with probably what was on his mind, you uh, got to just uh, congratulate the guy. Yeah, I mean, just incredible to get the win for himself and also the team and, yeah, just fight through that adversity. Really impressive and speaks a lot to his mental fortitude, like you said. Yep, 100%. Now we'll go on to our top play of the week. Uh, We'll play that now. 2-1, 2-1, half block there, well struck, right center field toward the wall, it goes off the wall, one run is in, come on down, Mikalakis, the throw to play, the Cats win it, the Cats win it, Arizona wins the final Pac-12 championship. And speaking of important final games in conference play, this was Maybe the biggest result that we saw out there with right fielder Brandon Summerhill of Arizona getting the walk-off against Oregon State to clinch the Pac-12 regular season title. Uh, And this was after the first two games of the series where they got absolutely dominated and they were down pretty much every outfielder they had. They had a a pitcher in center field for the final game. So to be able to battle and compete for that uh, yeah, conference title was super impressive and the walk-off. Uh, just speaks for itself. That ball was crushed. It would have been a home run any other day, but the wind was blowing in and completely knocked it down. But it was like 110 off the bat. And uh, yeah, it was the winning conference uh, title uh, swing. So super impressive. Yeah, just incredible given the situation. And yeah, kind of unique since uh, Oregon State missed a conference uh, game during the season. So there was no way for them to tie atop the standings. So normally you don't see that head-to-head where there's not a possibility of it being a tie. It really was just truly up for grabs, and Arizona snagged it. Awesome play. Yeah, winner takes all, and Arizona was just on the right side of things. Super impressive with just how things turned out with those first two games, be able to have that yeah mental resiliency to just say, you know what, those games didn't matter. It's all on the line for this final game, and they were able to uh, to pull it out there. And now going to our sweep setback of the week, It's going to be, I feel like a lot of weeks it's been SEC teams. This week, uh, including in that, it's going to be South Carolina. For the past two weeks, they've looked really bad. They were almost uh, the uh, setback last week, but decided to go with another team. But South Carolina 0-3 at Tennessee. So, I mean, really, it's it's just tough luck. Tennessee is super hot right now. They're the number one team in the nation. Uh, And But really, it's just a combination of everything. This is their second straight uh, getting week getting swept and so six straight games now uh, for a losing streak not great going into potentially the postseason if they can even make it there they're trending in the wrong direction and really need to flip things around in the conference tournament to be able to uh, turn some heads and get them back in the postseason which they really should be with their overall resume but you don't want to be trending down like they are right now yeah, it's just really tough to go from 13 and 11 in the SEC to suddenly 13 and 17. And yeah, that's really dangerous, especially if they drop that first game in the SEC tourney in Hoover. If you end the season on seven straight losses, I don't know that they're getting in, which would be crazy given their RPI. Their RPI is in hosting range, but they just have really been racking up the losses to end the season. And it's tough to, you know, make a case when you're trending downward like that. Yeah, definitely uh, need to turn things around quickly to be able to to not be in the mix of one of those SEC teams that's on the fringe of not making the uh, the tournament here. But now we're going to go on to our series prediction results from the past week. 
we do that, uh, you know, every every week. We choose the top five series that we think are going to be the most competitive and just the most enthralling overall. Uh, this week, both of us did really well. This may be the best week we've had this year. I feel like it is, especially since we did have some disagreements, but we hit on all the teams we agreed on. So that was, uh, I think, the, definitely the first time this has happened this year where both of us went 4-1. and one. So we'll take it. We're finally uh, moving up over that uh, that 500 threshold uh, cumulatively. But, yeah, uh, next week we're going to be doing the – the. Uh, I guess, conference tournaments for predicting. And that's going to be a real crapshoot there, but uh, we're going to give it our best try and, and see what happens. But those will also be included in our uh, prediction results. Yeah, it's uh, good to get that jump and have a good week before conference tourneys because who knows who's going to win those, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens. Yeah, definitely. And now moving on to the meat of the podcast, we have our rankings from the past week not a a ton of movement in the top a lot of the teams did relatively well there were a few head-to-heads that switched things up a bit but starting things off with Tennessee in that number one spot still after going 4-0 like we previously mentioned sweeping South Carolina at home really impressive week they just keep solidifying their number one rank uh, and pretty much dominated at home for the most part uh, this was a week there. I guess Tennessee, when they first got to that number one rank, was a little bit iffy, but they definitely have been consistently, you know, uh, able to prove that they should be that number one team right now. Yeah, just playing extremely well and continuing to win and take care of business ever since they've entered that number one spot. Uh, curious to see how things go down in Hoover. If they're able to win that tourney as well, that kind of uh, potentially solidify themselves as the number one seed in the country for the tourney. Uh, right now, the RPI doesn't reflect that, so it'll be interesting to see if they can kind of back that up and try and get uh, near the top. Yep, for sure. And next up, we have Kentucky in that number two spot, staying there after going 2-1 and one versus Vandy. Very good week overall. They looked very, very good the first two games, pretty much not competitive. Vandy's really struggling, another one of those teams that may be on the bubble for some reason, even though their RPI is super good. Just uh, depends on how much the committee uses that metric. Uh, to determine which teams make it and which teams don't. But Kentucky just continues to prove that they're one of the best teams in the country and in the SEC. So, yeah, they're just taking advantage of the situation with Vandy struggling overall. Yeah, Kentucky uh, solidified a share of that SEC title with Tennessee and fitting to see these two teams atop of the rankings, uh, atop of the best conference in the country. So, hand in hand here. And, yeah, good to see them on top here. Yep. Next up, another SEC team. We have Texas A&M at three, moving up two spots from last week after going two and one versus what was number three Arkansas. Getting that series result was super impressive. Uh, they dominated the uh, final game to take the series, so it was that rubber match, and they just completely blew it out of the water. Uh, the first game, super close. Really could have gone either way, but they're able to, uh, I guess, take that home field advantage and, and get that win there. Uh, super impressive. Their first uh, loss for uh, Hagen Smith's start, even though he didn't get uh, awarded the loss there. Just uh, overall, I mean, he's been super impressive, but the offense of Arkansas hasn't been all there. Texas A&M might look like they're starting to ramp things up. It's tough to know with that, the, the I guess, the Thursday game with Hagen Smith's start. You can't really expect too much offense there, but they have started to uh, to slowly ramp it up, at least for that uh, that final game where they clinched the series. Yeah, I mean, this was a super impressive series win, uh, one of the most high-profile series of the year, really, which is uh, impressive considering both of these teams were kind of trending down at the moment as well. It would have been uh, even higher profile if it was a few weeks uh, earlier, but still a very solid series win, and Texas A&M solidified themselves as one of the best teams in the SEC, one of the best teams in the country, and yeah, just really, really solid week in performance overall. Yep, definitely. And next up, we have Oregon State at number four. I want to say it's more like a 3A, 3B scenario. I think Oregon State deserves to go up. They didn't this past week after going 2-1 and one at what was number 20 Arizona. Uh, winning that series, unfortunately, not good enough to win the conference, but still super impressive results. The first two games were just absolutely dominated by Oregon State and just barely fell short in that final game, getting walked off. So the wins, yeah, super impressive, and the loss just barely. I feel like that, that balances things out. Almost got the sweep there. Maybe would have been able to, to move up a spot if that was the case. But, yeah, I do feel like it's more of a, a 3A, 3B scenario here. 
Yeah, it seems like Oregon State has bounced back from a couple rough weeks there a little bit ago, and it looks like they're playing well. Heading into the postseason here, it'll be uh, interesting to see what they can do down in Scottsdale for the Pac-12 tourney. They're certainly uh, solidified as a host right now and could potentially creep up into the uh, the top eight seeds there if they do well. Yeah, for sure. Next up at five, we have North Carolina moving up two spots after a 2 and one week at what was number 13 Duke. So really impressive getting a road series win against a, a very competitive squad, and they just look really, really solid. Definitely seeming like the best team in the ACC after being a, kind of a, a second-tier team for a lot of the year behind Clemson, behind Duke, behind Florida State. They were just kind of lurking North Carolina, and, and now they're hot at the right time and took the conference there. And so, yeah, they're just building off that and really impressive weekend on the road against Duke. Yeah, this was a big series win to solidify that conference regular season title. And, yeah, like we, the ACC has just been a jumbled mess the whole year, so... I think it definitely is a statement to come out on top of that conference with just how much uh, how much of a battle there was between a group of like six or seven teams. So uh, it's a hard-fought uh, conference title and certainly deserving. Yep, for sure. And now at six, we have Arkansas moving back three spots from last week after going one and two at Texas A&M. So it's a very different story if they win that first game and win the series after the first two. Uh, we're looking at Arkansas maybe as a, a yeah probably staying in that top three area, maybe even, you know, vying for even higher than that, depending on how results go. But Arkansas, unfortunately, comes up on the losing end, but it would have been a really, really impressive road series win. Uh, But, you know, could have gone either way, so can't really ding them too much. But the offense is still uh, have its question marks. And, yeah, definitely can't rely on pitching the entire time, especially with how everybody has been besides Hagen Smith. Yeah, it's just brutal to lose that Friday game, uh, zero to one in eleven innings. You just need a little bit of run support. Uh, we know it's a you know it's a battle of the aces there, but you just need to see more run production, and it's just amplified on this stage when their offense has struggled throughout the year. So, something they hopefully can get uh, get running in Hoover in the tourney, but otherwise it's it's a little troublesome and worrisome heading into the postseason that the offense isn't really clicking right now. For sure. And now at seven, we have another ACC team in Clemson after sweeping Boston College the past week. Good sweep overall. Got the job done against a team that they probably should be sweeping, especially at home. The pitching still hasn't been amazing, hasn't really impressed, but the offense is one of the best out there, so they can make up for that. But definitely uh, haven't seen really any improvement from the pitching like the entire year, which is a little worrying coming up on the postseason, but I feel like they have the the ability to easily make it out of regionals. It's just after that where uh, things could end up being a little bit of a struggle. But this Clemson team offense is, you know, comes in bunches. But yeah, pitching definitely, but definitely a, a big old question mark still. Yeah, after the offense kind of disappeared last week against Wake, they found it again here. And this week was just classic Clemson getting themselves in a huge hole early in the game and then just scrapping their way back throughout the game, getting some clutch hits in the eighth and ninth inning and coming out with wins. Don't know how they continue to do it. Uh, you know, it's not a not a fun or a easy, easy play style for fans. You know, you're just stressing the whole game, but they continue to rack up some wins and have solidified themselves as one of the best teams in the country. For sure. And now going to the ACC again, we have NC State at eight moving up three spots after sweeping what was number 10 Wake Forest at home. So just they continue to take off the top teams in the ACC. They've beaten, I think, all of them except Florida State where they went one and one because they didn't play that final game. But NC State, even though their record isn't amazing overall, they just continue to prove it against the best teams. And that's kind of what you want to see from from anybody that's going into the postseason. They just continue to just crush them. And NC State is just one of those teams that maybe plays down to some competition, but plays up to every good team that they faced. Yeah, I mean, if they if they don't have those uh, those weeks getting swept by Louisville and Georgia Tech early on, I think they did have some injuries in a couple of those weeks. If they don't get swept there, if they win those series or at least go three and three, you might be seeing NC State as one of the top three teams in the country or something is just a completely different story but 
yeah, just super impressive that they continue to pull off these massive high, high, high profile series wins. And yeah, they're just guaranteed for it every time. So it's really impressive. Yeah, when they are hot, they're just impossible to beat, it seems like, at least in the ACC. But sticking there, we have Florida State at number 9, staying in that spot after going 2-2, two and two, losing their midweek, but winning the weekend series versus Georgia Tech. So, okay week overall. Uh, for a 2-2 two two week, you, you do like to see them still winning the weekend series, but Stetson is not a team that they should be losing to, at, especially this late in the season. I feel like that's a game that most... Uh, or a lot of teams might just cancel off the schedule. Florida State decides to, to play it, and it does hurt them a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, wouldn't like that to be the way since, you know, you'd rather just play games and, and see that happen instead of uh, canceling a bunch. But in this case, it, it does kind of hurt Florida State. They probably would have moved up if they did just go 2-1 and one, uh, this past week. But, yeah, it does get dragged down a little bit from losing that midweek. Yeah, definitely a tough one there, and luckily it didn't hurt them too much in the RPI, still sitting at eight, but, you know, probably want to win at least one game in that ACC tourney to try and solidify a top eight seed. Otherwise, it's a little worrisome, and yeah, definitely would have liked to seen that midweek win or potentially pull off the sweep. They certainly had an opportunity to do that in that last game against Georgia Tech. Yep, for sure. And now at 10, we have Georgia falling back four spots from last week. After they were one of the hottest teams, probably the hottest team in the country for the past few weeks, they lose to Florida at home. So yeah, right as they were extremely hot, this Florida team, which is a team that if they are in the right headspace, they can compete and they can win against the top teams in the country. We just haven't seen that consistently this year. Uh, but Florida, they just turned it on and were able to, to out hit Georgia. Super high scoring games for the most part. Uh, and yeah, if, if Florida's bats are at least somewhat comparable to Georgia, then it's going to be a, a real battle between the two teams. Uh, but you know, Georgia's still in a very good spot overall uh, and to, to just be able to host and probably a top eight seed if they can just tune things a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like this weekend was kind of more reflective of the Georgia team we expected going into the year. Uh, we knew there'd be some offensive production, but you know, the pitching staff was a little worrisome and unproven, but throughout the year, they've uh, continued to prove people wrong and have continued to play at a high level and just play better and better as the season has gone along. But a bit of a setback this week. We'll see if they're able to correct it during the SEC tourney. Uh, if not, that is a little troublesome heading into the postseason, but we do know this team can hit and can hit just out hit just about anyone. Maybe not Florida this past week, though. Yeah, a little unfortunate running against a Florida team that was apparently hot that one week, but uh, it happens. They're still in a good spot overall, though. So next up, we have Virginia at 11, moving up one spot after sweeping Virginia Tech. So really, really good week overall. Maybe in other weeks, jumps up a little bit more. Just wasn't too much room to operate with a lot of teams around them doing well. Uh, yeah, and Virginia getting the sweep at home. Super, super good job. All, only one close game. Uh, so, yeah, just... Overall, Virginia has put together a really good resume as one of the better teams in the conference and in the country. Yeah, I feel like Virginia just continues to have a, a quietly good season. It's a team we've said has kind of been overranked in the past, but you know they certainly don't slip up too much to to fall down much either. Uh, they don't do they haven't done anything insanely impressive thus far, but haven't had huge setbacks either, and so find themselves in a really good spot right now, and they've just taken care of business most of the season. Yeah, for sure. And now at 12, we have East Carolina moving up two spots from last week after sweeping Rice. Uh, just good week overall, getting back on track against a bad team. They did what they needed to do. Say this a lot for mid-majors. But East Carolina, team that is looking to be a host. They were for a while in that spot to maybe be a top eight seed. It looks pretty fringe right now, especially against... Uh, the overall conference is not great, and East Carolina will still be playing some relatively bad teams in their tournament. But, you know, they, they could, if RPI isn't looked too heavily into it, could still up as a top eight, end up as a top eight seed. But uh, most likely they'll just be a, a host team. Yeah, it's, it's a little scary right now. The RPI dropped uh, four points, even though they got the sweep here. They're down to 16 now, and they actually open up the conference tourney with Rice once again. And so you could see the RPI drop even a little more. 
I do think they deserve a hosting spot just considering how they've taken care of their conference conference throughout the regular season and throughout uh, many points in the year they've looked like a top 10 team in the country and have solidified themselves in that sense so solid week overall and uh, we'll see if they're able to continue that throughout the conference journey yeah definitely and next up we have Mississippi State at 13 after going three and one the past week and winning their weekend series as well as their midweek. No sweeps, but a good week overall. Almost got the sweep on the weekend, so that would have been good. It was against Missouri, so a team that they definitely could have swept, the bottom dweller of the conference there. Uh, but it was a good week overall to just get back on track and get in the right state of mind heading into the conference tournament. Mississippi State, a team that is probably in that hosting range, just uh, you know, unless things go really wrong in the conference tournament, but most likely will be a host overall. Yeah, they certainly have the resume, too. Uh, this is a similar week to East Carolina where they played well, but the RPI effect was not great. Down six spots from 16 to 22, so pretty fringe right now, but they do kind of have the uh, the wins and the resume overall to back it. So uh, probably need a win in Hoover, though, to really solidify that. Hopefully they're able to pull that off as uh, I think they've had one of the, the more underrated seasons in the SEC this year. Yeah, I think they also get the uh, the benefit of playing its top RPI teams in their conference tournament, so they have definitely the ability to, to jump up a lot if they can get at least a few wins there, and that'll solidify probably a hosting spot. But after that, we have UC Irvine at 14, moving up one spot from the last week, winning their midweek, and then going to Cal State Fullerton and getting that series win, good week overall. I think it could have been better. Cal State Fullerton is definitely having a down year. They are not looking like the teams in the past. Uh, but overall, decent job. It's still on the road, so things are things are always a little bit more difficult there and still got the series win. Yeah, solid week overall and, you know, just been a really good season altogether for UC Irvine. Uh, you know, Santa Barbara passed them up in the conference and Looks like Santa Barbara is probably going to take that hosting spot out of the Big West, but really a solid year from UC Irvine thus far, and it'll be uh, really interesting to see how things shape out in the postseason for them as well. Yep, and now at 15, we have Duke dropping back two spots from last week after losing at home to what was number seven, North Carolina. Now they are at number five, so moved up from that, but Duke dropping back a few spots, really tough week. Uh, they just continue to, to slip a little bit. The past few weeks, they haven't looked amazing. They were a top 10 team for a lot of the season and recently just falling off a little bit. They have been facing tough competition, but haven't played their best overall, uh, especially against the better competition in the conference. Yeah, it's just a little worrisome. That series loss to Georgia Tech really hurts. Uh, I thought they looked solid this week. Uh, played pretty competitive with North Carolina, especially the first two games. Both of them were, were close, and the first game was a solid win for them. But would have liked to see a, seen a series win there just to kind of solidify themselves as uh, you know playing well heading into the end of the year. Not really the case right now, but still has the makeup of one of the better teams in the country and can certainly compete with anyone still. For sure. I mean, when you get that first win in a conference uh, weekend series, you kind of expect to at least get the series win. It feels like a real missed opportunity there to uh, to let that slip, but obviously it was against really good competition. But at home, you, you kind of want to hone in and get at least one of, the, one of the wins in the next two days. But after that, we have another ACC team in Duke or in Wake Forest at 16, <laughs> dropping back six spots. We keep talking about Wake Forest. They just keep ping-ponging around right as it seems like they're getting super hot. They uh, drop a series, and this week they got swept at NC State. So this NC State team, we keep mentioning it. They're the, the head honchos of the conference when speaking about the, the best teams out there. Seems like they just beat all of them. Maybe not the best against the lower teams, but yeah, they just continue to, to topple all the best. And Wake Forest was considered one of them, especially at the start of the year, and they've just been hovering around that middle of the pack. Their overall record in conference is not great now. I think they're like 500 or something like that. So really would have liked to see them do better, especially it just seems like when they're down, they're really down. When they're up, they can play with the best of them. But yeah, against NC State, they were definitely uh, in the, uh, the, I guess, former of the two. Yeah, I mean, you saw it with Asher and I just learning from our mistakes here. Both predicted NC State to win this series. We knew it was too good to be true for Wake Forest playing well. They're just so wishy-washy and inconsistent and, you know, it's, 
it's really worrisome to see that continue uh, at the end of the year here as well. Uh, it makes me think that I'm not sure they can put together three straight weekends of impressive uh, impressive games in the postseason. Not sure they're really the, the title contender we thought they were heading into the year. I just don't think they have the consistency to play that well throughout the entire postseason stretch. Yeah, it's not looking great for me since that was my preseason prediction to win the whole thing was Wake Forest, and I feel like that was a lot of people. There were a few SEC teams up there, but Wake Forest was uh, at least one of the top three teams for, for most polls out there. We had them at one uh, preseason, so for them to be this inconsistent, super surprising. It seems like if they lose that Chase Burns game, the weekend is just over. Uh, they can still maybe scrap something out for uh, if they do get that first win, but if Chase Burns gets a little... Uh, dinged up then it, then it's a real problem heading into those next few games because if the bullpen is is on the back foot already it's a it's a real problem heading heading further especially since the bullpen hasn't been even that consistent uh even if they they do pitch well the first game so it's a uh, real tough for this wake forest squad just no consistency like we said but now heading to 17 staying in that spot from last week is dallas baptist going two and one at middle tennessee Good week overall. It seems like they've just been hovering around this spot for a very long time. Nothing has been super impressive with this squad. Uh, and for a mid-major, you kind of need to impress a lot more to be able to jump up over some of these teams that are facing tougher competition week in, week out. And Dallas Baptist just hasn't impressed that much, especially against the uh, the Middle Tennessee team this past week. Very uh, iffy competition. Would have liked to see a sweep, even though it was on the road. Yeah, solid week. Uh, you know, DBU has gotten back on track for winning series at least, but haven't looked quite as dominant as they did early in the year. Still have the makeup to uh, to be a contender in the postseason in my mind. Um, have one of the best pitchers in the country and have some good pieces to, to back that up as well. So uh, looking good heading into the postseason, but not an incredibly impressive week uh, altogether. Yeah, definitely. And now at 18... Also staying in the same spot, unfortunately, is UCSB. Went 4-0 the past week. Super impressive week. They swept uh, Cal State Northridge on the road, which was pretty impressive overall. That was one of our series predictions where we both got it right. Uh, maybe a freebie there, but still one of the better series out there this past week. And yeah, UCSB just continues to prove that they're maybe the, the head of that conference, even though UC Irvine is above them in the rankings. Uh, UCSB probably should have jumped up at least one spot, maybe a few, but there just wasn't any move, uh, room to move up with uh, all the teams above them doing well. So UCSB staying in that same spot, but uh, still a very impressive week. Yeah, this pitching staff is just really honed in down the stretch. Uh, the preseason ace, Matt Agger, just has in a reliever role now, so just speaks to the, uh, the amount of pieces they have on that pitching staff. And yeah, they're just playing extremely well and this was a impressive sweep uh, Cal State Northridge not a bad team we saw them uh, hang with Oregon State for a, a good amount in their four game series against them early in the year so certainly not a team to take lightly and definitely an impressive week yeah for sure and similarly with uh, UCSB we have Oregon staying in the same spot from last week at 19 even though they swept Washington State at home very good week it was against a little bit of lesser competitions one of the uh the bottom dwellers of the conference, but still impressive to get a sweep. This is the uh, the first conference sweep they had this year, even though they, they definitely had opportunities earlier in the year, but good to see them uh, them get the wins, and this probably solidifies their uh, berth in the postseason. Uh, maybe things go a little awry, but most likely this, uh, this confirmed it here. Yeah, I would be surprised to see them not make the uh, postseason with a 19-11 year in the Pac-12. Uh, that should get it done, and yeah, solid week overall. Like you said, wasn't the best competition, but nice for them to get that sweep, and we'll see if they're able to, uh, you know, take a crack at defending their uh, conference uh, conference tournament title down in uh, Scottsdale. Yep, for sure. And now at 20, we have Oklahoma moving up three spots from last week after winning the series at Cincinnati. Good week on the road. Pretty much, I guess, I think already had the conference locked up at this point. Uh, but still showed that they can keep the momentum going into the conference tournament and get that series win. So impressive there, even though they really didn't have anything to fight for. They still uh, yeah, kept building on, on what they had this entire season. Yeah, I mean, they just pulled off a super impressive stretch to close out the year. This wasn't a crazy impressive week in itself, but Oklahoma's just played 
extremely well throughout this back half of the year. The Big 12 was a mess for so many weeks with no teams in the rankings or just one team barely in the rankings, but Oklahoma ends up winning the conference by three full games, and they just completely dominated down the stretch and do look like a team that is uh, playing extremely well heading into the postseason. Yep, definitely. And now at 21, we have Indiana State moving up one spot. After not moving up the past few weeks and having good weeks, they uh, were able to get one spot here, and they swept Valparaiso on the road. So really good uh, week. It was against a bad team, but they pretty much dominated. There was a lot of offense, uh, and Indiana State just came out on top for, for every single game, and which most of them weren't, weren't that close. Yeah, I mean, this has just been the story of this Indiana State team the whole year. Nothing super impressive, but they take care of business. They get good results. Uh, haven't really beaten anybody that jumps off the page, but they continue to win games. And it'll be interesting to see how they shape up against legit competition once the postseason comes. Yeah, definitely. And now at 22, we have Texas moving up three spots from last week after sweeping Kansas. Great week to end the regular season with the sweep. Just continue to stay hot. Probably maybe just right behind Oklahoma for where my power rankings are in the Big 12 right now. But Texas, a team that really struggled the middle of the year. Uh, they were ranked at some point beginning of the year, but fell out for a very long time and didn't look like they were even going to get close to sniffing the rankings again. But suddenly Texas was right on the doorstep. And yeah, they just continue to win series and finishing it off with a sweep is uh, yeah super impressive. This Texas squad maybe doesn't have the most talent as we've seen Texas teams have in the past, but they, you know, Texas just somehow finds a way to make it to, uh, to Omaha feels like every year. And this Texas squad maybe has that in them this year as well. Yeah. A team that I think people were fairly high on heading into the, uh, into the season. Uh, didn't think they were a top contender, but thought it was going to be a solid team and didn't really look like that through the first half of the year, but they've turned it on to, uh, to end the season. And like you said, they're a team that continues to find their way to Omaha, and I wouldn't be uh, completely shocked to see this team find their way there as well with the way they're uh, playing down the stretch. Yeah, it's especially impressive since their uh, preseason ace, LeBaron Johnson, has not looked anything like he uh, he did last year. I mean, ERA is a, a lot higher. Maybe I mean, he's still a decent pitcher, but definitely not the guy we saw last year. So for them to be able to piece things back together is uh, impressive for this Texas squad. But now at 23, we have Arizona moving back three spots after losing this series at home to uh, number four, Oregon State. Uh, looked really, really bad the first two games. They're dealing with a lot of injuries, especially in the outfield. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, they played a pitcher in, the, in center field for their final game that they eventually clinched the Pac-12 regular season title in. So super impressive to uh, just get that gutsy win there and Win it with a walk-off was uh, one way to stay in the rankings for us. And, and still a, a very overall, I mean, obviously they had a really good resume overall winning the uh, conference. But, yeah, I think hopefully they can get healthy. At least a few more pieces get healthy before the conference tournament or else it could be a pretty quick ending. But, you know, at least they'll they'll be around their uh, their home facilities. So hopefully should help a little bit. Yeah, not a super worrisome uh, week overall. Uh, Oregon State, a team that's been in the top 10 pretty much the entire season, so not bad to drop a series to them. Uh, but like you mentioned, I think the more alarming part right now is just the health of the team overall. You don't want to be playing pitchers in the outfield come postseason time, so hopefully they're able to get some guys healthy and get back on track before the uh, before the end of the year and these uh, postseason tourneys, but if not, it's a little worrisome and a little anticlimactic for their season. Yeah, definitely. And now the next two spots, we have teams jumping into the rankings. Probably should have been ranked last week, but just not enough spaces out there. At 24, we have Oklahoma State after going 2-0 the past week at Houston. Not able to play a full three-game slate, but a great week. Should have been ranked last week probably, but good to get back. In the rankings, they did the job against Houston, and uh, yeah, just pretty much we're, we're pretty much guaranteed as long as they didn't just blow it. So, yeah, took the spots that that they needed. Yeah, another uh, Big Twelve team that looks like they figured it out a bit more at the end of the year here, uh, playing solid and solid week to get two wins over Houston, who was not one of the better teams in the in the Big Twelve this year. Uh, showed some flashes of some some decent play, but didn't end up playing super well overall. But 
solid for Oklahoma State and a team that I definitely think is uh, going to be competitive heading into the postseason here. Definitely. And now wrapping things up with the top 25, we have Louisiana at 25. Probably should have been ranked last, last week, like I mentioned. Uh, we're right around the rankings for a while, in and out and in and out, that kind of thing. They were 2-1 uh, and one the past week against South Alabama, so good week, getting uh, great results against a pretty good competition there, and they ended up winning the conference, so that's a plus. Definitely deserve to be ranked and just fitting in that 25 spot for now. Yeah, super impressive season from them, uh, deserving of being in the rankings. Like you said, uh, the Sun Belt was a super competitive conference this year with some uh, really solid teams in there. It was a pretty deep conference, and so for them to come out on top and win, it, win the conference pretty handedly is uh, definitely impressive. Yeah, and the teams that did drop out, those two teams, were Alabama and South Carolina, so the SEC seems like there is a big gap between the top and the, the mid-level teams where a lot of them are vying for, for the chance to make the postseason. There's just a lot of teams around that middle level that probably should be in with their RPI, but who knows with just their overall just plate, especially with how they did in the conference, not amazing. Alabama lost to Auburn on the road this week. Super, super bad. Uh, for for a team that really should be beating Auburn, even though it's a rivalry, I get it. But this might be the reason why they don't make the postseason somehow. Uh, it's just not the best look. And South Carolina, like we mentioned earlier, now on a six game losing streak in conference. Uh, even though it was against Tennessee on the road, it's a tough tough time to come up against them. But you know you got to get some wins somewhere. And if they're able to scrap one win from last week or this week, maybe it's a different story. But can't be uh, on a losing streak like that come postseason. Yeah, really tough weeks for those guys. And, you know, Hoover SEC Tournament is going to have some of the best teams in the country. And uh, it's also going to have some uh, big implications for some uh, NCAA Tournament lives here. So it's going to be an intriguing week down there. And it'll be uh, very interesting to see how that group of teams on the bubble uh, shakes out and who gets in, who doesn't. Yeah, it's a make or break moment. We've seen in the past few years that bubble team might be the team that just wins it all uh, with Ole Miss. That was definitely the case. They were the last team in, and they were able to turn things around at the right time. So who knows about these teams that aren't playing particularly well, if they can get something going and make themselves just a little bit more solidified outside of the bubble than definitely want to be there. And, yeah, any SEC team, it seems, just every year can, can win the whole thing if they get hot at the right time. But, yeah, I mean, besides that, usually we, we end things with the teams that are close to being in the top 25, but this week there really weren't any. Uh, most previous weeks there is a, a solid number of teams that are right on the outside, but this week it seemed like the teams that were right on the outside got in and the teams that uh, maybe the other teams that were also close didn't have good weeks, so they dropped further back. So it's a, a very strange week for the last week of our regular season season. Uh, rankings top 25 to really just not have anybody outside of the top 25, but it makes it easy for us, especially making those decisions for teams to come in. Yeah, not really many teams on the outside looking in. Uh, the only one I would mention is San Diego. Uh, they've only lost one game in the last month, and it was a uh, midweek to UC Irvine, so not a bad loss at all. Uh, they've ended the year super hot, and if they're able to win the uh, WCC tourney, uh, it's uh, That's going to be a dangerous two-seed heading into the postseason and uh, a team that is knocking on the door in our rankings. But like you said, a lot of other teams just completely fell off and there's not a lot of competition in that spot right now. Yeah, for sure. That San Diego, I guess, yeah, like you mentioned, probably that 26 team, but they didn't even play any games the past week, so not really any way to gauge it, especially against teams that did and were already pretty much solidified to jump in the rankings there. But that will be that for this week's podcast next week. Coming up against the, uh, the postseason conference tournament starting now. Super uh, excited for that. Be sure to keep an eye out later in the week for our conference series predictions. Or I guess not, not even conference series predictions. The, the uh, yeah, conference tournament predictions. Uh, we're just going to see what happens. It's going to be a, a tough one to predict. But uh, yeah, it should be fun. And yeah, be sure to pay attention to that. It will be out shortly. Peace.